My name is Matthew Powers. I'm going to be talking about unit testing with PySpark, how we're bringing software engineering best practices to our data engineering workflows. Uh, okay, here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about why do we even bother with unit tests in the first place? Like, what value do they bring us? We'll talk about data frame equality versus column equality at a high level and how those kind of form the basis of a lot of our unit testing. We'll chat about uh, how to unit test PySpark codes, specifically data frame transformations, column functions, and SQL snippets. Yes, that's right. We're going to talk about how to unit test SQL snippets. Then we're going to talk about uh, testing code with file system I.O. and also refactoring your code so it's more testable. Okay. Uh, so a little bit about myself. I'm a developer advocate at Databricks. I'm a longtime Spark blogger uh, and Delta Lake blogger as well. I've created a bunch of open source projects. Uh, the two that are most relevant to this talk are Spark uh, Fast Test, which is a Scala testing library, and Chispa, which is a PySpark testing library. A lot of the examples in this uh, demo are going to use Chispa uh, and, and the Chispa functionality. I wrote a book on testing uh, Spark applications, but that's in Scala, so probably not of interest to most of you. OK, so why do we want to unit test our code? When we unit test our code, refactoring is easier, right? If we have 100% test coverage, uh, in theory, when we refactor our code, if the tests are still passing, we should be good to go on a production deploy. Unit tests encourage better abstractions. So code that's uh, <coughs> easy, easily wrapped in nice functions is easy to unit test. So that kind of encourages you to make better abstra abstractions. Uh, by unit testing your code, you can catch bugs before production deploys. So unit test is going to encourage you to look at the edge cases of your code and test them before you make your production deploys. Uh, it's going to make debugging easier, right? So we have nicer abstractions, so we get nicer stack traces. And for people like me who like living in IDEs and localhost uh, Vim setups or whatever, uh, localhost development makes us happy. So uh, when you're unit testing, it encourages you to, do, to work in localhost. OK, let's look at data frame equality at a high level before uh, digging into the unit testing code. So a lot of the foundational uh, testing is going to be just comparing two data frames. And when we're comparing two data frames, we're going to do two, two major steps. One is to check the schema equality. So we're going to look at, to check the, the column name, column type, and nullability property uh, between the two data frames is the same. And then after we check and confirm that the schemas are the same, we're going to check that all the values in both of the data frames are the same. So if we're comparing these two data frames, we're going to first look at them, data frame A and data frame B, and say, OK, these have the same schemas. So that checks out. But then we look and see in the third row, the values are different. So this would say, hey, these data frames aren't the same. Now, column equality tests are a little different because we're just looking at one data frame. And what we're doing is looking at the values in two different columns and saying, are the values in these two different columns the same? So in this case, we're going to compare age and expected age. And we're going to say, OK, these aren't the same because the values in these two columns are not equal. Uh, cool. <clears throat> Let's dive in and look at testing a data frame transformation. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, cool. So let's suppose we have the following CSV. So it has an animal info column. That's kind of a funky data set. It's uh, two different types of data in that animal info, and it's separated by the and sign. And turn your attention to section two in the lower left. We'd like to read in that CSV file into that data frame in the, in the lower left, which is species and family. So apparently, this animal info column contains, contains species and family. So what we can do to read this in is create this clean animals function. What that's going to do is take a data frame as an argument and return a data frame as a re uh, return value. And it's going to split the animal info column on that and uh, symbol. And then we're just going to separate out the species and family columns. So that clean animals function is known as a data frame transformation, which is a function that takes a data frame as an argument and returns a data frame as a result. Let's see how we can unit test this. So what we do there is we're going to read in that CSV file into a, a data frame. And then we are going to compute the actual data frame by actually invoking this clean animals function. 
we use that with this transform argument. So it, with Spark, it's really nice to compose data frame transformations with that transform function, which is built into Spark. Then we're going to construct our expected result. So we just construct that expected data frame. And then we're going to use the chispa assert df equality function to verify that the actual data frame is equivalent to the expected data frame. Now, <clears throat> you'll notice that this test involves uh, file system IO, right? We have that, that animal CSV, which is stored in our uh, code repository. Later, we'll see how to write a similar test that doesn't actually involve any uh, file system IO. So when we're looking at this test from a conceptual perspective, we can see that there's a few different kind of basic steps of a unit test. The first thing is we create some sort of sample data. Then we invoke the function that we're looking to test. Then we create some sort of expected value. And then we uh, confirm that the actual computed value equals the expected value. And that's kind of the, the general pattern you're, we're going to see in all of these unit tests. Cool. Let's turn our attention to unit testing a column function. So a column function is defined as a function that takes a PySpark column as an object and returns a PySpark column as a result. So we have data frame transformations, which they take a data frame and they return a data frame. And column functions take a PySpark column and return a PySpark column. So in this case, we have this cool function that kind of just classifies an individual as a child, teenager, or adult. And we've named this life stage. So <clears throat> let's create a data frame with the expected return value. So we can already see that we're setting up this test a little bit different than the previous test. In this case, we're creating a, the data frame with the input value and the expected output value. So this data frame contains three columns, first name, age, and expected. So when the age is 56, we expect them to be classified as an adult. When the age is 16, we expect them to be a teenager. When the age is three, we expect them to be a child. And when the age is none, we expect it to be a none. Now, that testing the none edge case is always a really good idea in your uh, unit tests. That way, you can make sure your functions don't blow up with the none input. OK, turn your attention to section three. We are going to invoke the life stage function and append a column to this data frame. So we're appending this column actual. And actual will be populated by invoking this life stage function with the age column as the input value. Uh, here we can see we're importing chispa, which is the testing utility I created. And then we are invoking this assert column uh, equality function. So we're passing a few uh, arguments to assert column equality. We're passing in the data frame. And then we're passing in the expected value and the actual value. And by expected value and actual value, we're talking about the expected column name and the actual column name. So pretty straightforward how to unit test a column function. This is another example, but we're not going to cover it, uh, just in the interest of time. OK. Now, we are going to turn on our attention to testing SQL. And you might wonder, I didn't know we could test SQL. I thought SQL was impossible to test. Well, you actually can test it, which is awesome. Let's look at a, a SQL string that we'd like to test. So this is just a simple query, select star from my table, where amount is greater than 30. So now turn your attention to section two there. What we're going to do to make this SQL query testable is we're going to parameterize the query. So the parameters are going to be enclosed in curly braces. So we're going to change this query to select star from df, where amount is greater than amount. And both df and amount have been uh, parameterized. The, the ability to parameterize SQL queries was recently added in PySpark. OK, let's create a sample data set. Our sample data set is going to contain three columns, item, amount, and purchase date. So we have socks, uh, $7.55, handbag, $49.99, and so forth. OK, so when we uh, run this unit test, we're going to supply an amount argument greater than uh, 30. We're going to set amount to be 30. So we can see that the only two rows of data that should be returned after we invoke this query with the amount of 30 should be handbag for $49.99 and shorts for $35. So that's going to be our expected result. 
Uh, of course, this is, I'm, this is intentionally a very trivial, trivial example just to show this functionality, but you can do this for very complicated SQL as well. So our expected data frame is going to be basically all of those um, rows from the sample data set, except the ones with an amount greater than 30. So let's now make an assertion. And in this case, we're actually not going to use Chispa. We're going to use the built-in PySpark testing functionality. So from PySpark.testing, we are going to in import assert data frame equal. Then to compute our actual data frame, we're going to invoke our query with uh, the amount set to 30. And then we're going to use that built-in assert data frame equal function to verify that the actual data frame is the same as the expected data frame. Now, the built-in PySpark uh, testing utilities are still kind of less uh, fully featured than Chispa, but hopefully we get some open source developers who are going to completely build out the rest of this functionality. Uh, cool. Now let's look at a little chunk of code that's uh, a little bit harder to test and explain why this is kind of bad and why we maybe shouldn't structure our code like this. So let's suppose we have a CSV. <clears throat> the CSV has two columns, full name and age. The full name column is kind of funky. It's kind of a first name, last name delimited with a pipe. And then the age column is pretty straightforward. So what we'd like to do is, if you turn your attention to section two there, we'd like to read in this CSV data and create, construct a data frame with first name, last name, and age. But as you can see in that first name section, we'd like to strip out all of the weird characters from the first name. Uh, so I guess in a notebook or in a one-off ad hoc computation, this, this PySpark code isn't that bad. It's OK. We'll take a look at it. But then we're going to look at how to potentially structure this code better and in a more unit testable way. So let's take a look at section three and see what we're doing here. So we're reading in that CSV file. Then we're kind of splitting up the name parts, uh, which is the full name column delimited by the pipe. And then in order to compute the first name, last name, and age, you know, the first name is kind of messy because then we're doing the regex replace, name part zero. Then we kind of have this complicated regex string. And then we're replacing it with the empty string. And we can just kind of already see, like, I mean, I'm sure we've all seen this before, where PySpark code can get really complicated when you're just kind of leaving it out there and it's not being encapsulated in functions. So now we're saying, OK, we want to unit test this code. How do we restructure this code so it's more unit testable? Uh, so <clears throat> in section one, we have that same CSV from the previous slide. In section two, we have this same desired outcome. And in section three, what we're doing is we're creating a column function and also data frame transformation and invoking this function completely differently. So the column function we've constructed here is remove non-word characters. So we can see that that has the regex replace logic from the previous uh, slide. But because it's in a named function, it's much easier to reason about what that function is doing. When it was just kind of floating in our code, it was hard to understand actually what it was doing. But now it's like, oh, that removes the non-word characters. I get it. And now the clean people function, we can see that that's pretty identical to what it was before. But rather than uh, having the regex replace, we're invoking the remove non-word characters function. And we can see that that's immediately making the clean people function more readable. So this is kind of getting to where, what I was alluding to before, where we've kind of made our code with better abstractions and it's more readable because we want to unit test it. Well, let's take a look at the unit tests. Uh, okay. So here is the test for the remove non-word characters uh, function. So here we are creating a, a data frame. And what's really nice about when you're using these column equality testing is when you have your construct your data frame, you can kind of put your input data and the expected output side by side. So your tests are kind of really readable. So we have this I like fish weird string. And we're like, OK, we want to strip out all those non-word characters. We've got our zombies row. We can see how what that would like to be when all those non-word uh, characters are stripped out. And we're also checking the none input, of course. So when we compute our actual data frame, what we're doing is we're taking our input data frame, 
and we're adding our actual computed column, which we're calling words without non-word chars in this example. And we're invoking this remove non-word characters function with the words column as the argument. Then in order to perform this uh, column equality, we're just using the chispa assert column equality function. We're passing in the actual data frame, and then we are, again, comparing the actual value from invoking our function with the expected value. The expected value is, of course, what we've, we specified when we initially created the data frame. Now let's turn our attention to how we can unit test this clean people function. So remember <clears throat> before when I was saying we can abstract the file system IO from the testing code, and this is exactly what we're gonna do in this test. So data frame transformations, again, take a data frame as an argument, return a data frame. So we don't need to do any uh, file system IO to unit test this function. So what we're going to do is we're gonna define this source DF by just defining it in this, this uh, testing code. So we have our weird Cindy Lou string eight, max pane 23, and none 48. So we construct our source data frame, and then we create the actual data frame by actually invoking the test, uh, the, the function we're testing. Then we create our expected data and convert that to our expected data frame. And then our test is computing uh, the uh, assert, invoking the assert data frame equality function with the actual data frame and the expected data frame. <clears throat> so pretty straightforward. Again, the main components of formulating a unit test, you create some input data, you inv invoke the function you're trying to test, you create some expected data set, and then you compare your actual computed value versus your expected value. Uh, so let's take a look at topics for another talk. So I was cre creating this talk, I didn't realize it was 20 minutes, and then I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to talk about all the fun stuff. So here's some uh, stuff we didn't get uh, a chance to cover, but it's actually really important. One is the localhost config for running your test. So when you're running tests on your local machine, you wanna make sure you allocate enough memory so you don't wanna use the default memory settings. And you also definitely wanna make sure you're not using the, the default shuffle partitions, which is 200. You wanna use like maybe two shuffle partitions. This is gonna make your test run much faster. Uh, so for unit testing the PySpark code, we covered unit testing data frame transformations. Uh, of course, we didn't talk about all the options. That's one thing we would, we're gonna have to do in the next session. We talked about uh, testing column functions and we talked about testing SQL snippets. We, we didn't talk about testing UDFs or how to run tests with approximate equality. So that's what we're gonna have to cover in the next time. We didn't talk about testing uh, Spark structured streaming code, CICD, the Spark Connect considerations, and uh, getting all this utility into Spark itself. Again, these are all the topics for the next talk, uh, but that'll be great. Uh, feel free to follow me on LinkedIn if you would like to, if you like this sort of content, I post all the time. I spam LinkedIn, <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't used to, but now I'm like a daily LinkedIn poster, so uh, you can find me there. And thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask away. I'll pop on my headphones. <laughs>